direct to you and in your face. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. They're taking them from us. we got to take them back. And so, in fact, pull up the Frederick Douglass quote. I want the exact quote about Frederick Douglass, rights are taken, not given. I want to get the exact quote up on screen. Thanks, guys. Frederick Douglass. But, uh, look, they're going to do what they're going to do. We're going to have to do what we're going to do. But we can't just sit here and, and, and let the world go past us as spectators. Uh, and uh, so I commend what he's doing. I would say, though, I've seen cases, one in Colorado that's an open carry. This guy went to a rally with one. They went ahead and arrested him, set him up, sent him to prison, even though there wasn't a law. It's like Kelly Rushing in Lyon County, Kentucky. He was in the newspaper, and this is one of many cases. He gave a state police officer a video with Ron Paul on it and then one of my films after it. They indicted him. For the Ron Paul video, that was listed in the court, and my film, Road to Tyranny. And they said the officers felt threatened by the content was anti-law enforcement. So I called the judge up at home, and I said, because it was his number and information, and I said, well, I'm not getting in your trial, but is this newspaper art uh, article accurate that you are presiding over a trial over somebody giving somebody an Alex Jones, Ron Paul video? And he said, yes, uh, that trial's coming up next week. I'm not going to talk to you about it. And I said, you got to be kidding me. And I said, okay. I just, I just, I just couldn't believe this news article I was faxed. And, I, and then I talked to Kelly Rushing, upstanding, uh, 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 member of the community, no criminal record. And when the cops came and arrested him, they laughed at him when he was in the car and said, you're going to prison for giving me that video. I mean, they're crazy. So do we stop giving videotapes out? That was like seven, that was like six years ago, so it was a VHS tape. I mean, do we stop giving videos out because the, because the police say they're illegal? I mean, do we stop putting signs up on street corners because they say it's illegal? Do we just bend over completely to them? I mean, that's the big question. Uh, good to hear from you, uh, Jenny. I appreciate your call. Closing comments along those lines, Chris. Uh, no, I, I do have one closing comment I'd like to say. I'd just like to, uh, thank the, the Phoenix Police Department for handling everything in the most professional way they possibly could. I think they're the most professional police department in the country. Now, I did notice they did have some armed officers around you. Were they federal marshals or were they or, or I, were they Phoenix? I think they were just like Phoenix detectives or something, but they, they were they were awesome. We were we, we, we had some discussions and chit chatted a little bit and they handled they, they, they said we're here to make sure no one jumps on you. We're not at all concerned about what you're doing. And they did yeah, their, their body language, because I've watched the tapes, was friendly, and they seemed excited, they and they were, they, were, they were looking at you approvingly. Uh, so it sounds like there are some, actually some good people. Uh, specifically, tell me about your chit-chat. Uh, I, I had they, a lot of them were coming up to me and telling me, everyone's asking me, if you can do this, can you do this? Can you do this? And and you know, there's uh, one of them. One of them said, and he said, he said, don't tell him I said this, but I think what you're doing is awesome. And he said, I'm all for it. And it was nothing but positive things from the Phoenix Police Department. They were outstanding. They said we would rather be out here. You know, our job is to our job is to make peace, is to keep the peace. That's all we're here for. And you have every right to be here exercising your views and the opposite, the other other side. All the all these people have the right to ex express their views. And our our job here is only to keep the peace. And I was just blown away. I was, you know, because I come from I come from Cleveland, Ohio, and Cleveland, Ohio, their job is not to keep the peace. Uh, you know, they they do whatever the heck they want. And I was, I'm just very proud of Phoenix Police Department. Well. Yeah, I mean, I saw that on the video. The police officers, the body language was, you know, nine-tenths nine of communication is nonverbal, was we love this guy, this is great. But if you'd have come out there with a mask and dressed like a clown in camo, I mean, camo is for Southeast Asia. The, the, these people do it, and then it just looks clownish. I'm going to tell militias this. If you're going to wear camouflage at a public event, you better be in badass shape and you better have that uniform looking exactly right. And you better, you know, because because if it doesn't, you look like clowns. It's like Republic of Texas. I support investigating that, looking at that, talking about that. Texans making their own decision. 
But, I mean, hillbillies going, I'm the president. No, I'm the president. You know, a hundred different hillbilly groups going, and, and, and like their wives going, Mr. President, the admiral's here. And they pulls up with a bass boat. And I'm not even joking. You know, that that discredits everyone. But you out there, clean cut, well-spoken, with it strapped to your back, that's a good image. I, I predict they're going to send people out mask. They're going to send provocateurs out. They're really scared of this, but we keep catching them. Denver cops, we caught provocateuring. We caught the Ottawa police. They caught the British doing it. So they're kind of scared of provocateuring because they know we're looking for it. See, now we're in the game. Now we know the game. It's not like our first season of football. We've gone through Pee Wee League, and now we're you know into the junior high stuff, and we're about to go into varsity. And then we're going to go into the college and pro level. And the global has been playing the pro level for a long time. We are quickly coming up in the next few years on every level, no matter what they do, all their little tricks and programs are now being exposed. you see what I'm saying, Chris? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I also think that uh, armed citizens at these events, you know, kind of discourage provocateurs from causing trouble. Because now it's not just, you know, they can run into a crowd and mace people and there's nothing they can do or they can throw rocks and throw bottles. Well, now there's armed people, armed good people in the crowd that can fight back or, you know. It's, well, it's, I like it's, dangerous, the fact it's dangerous for a provocateur now. I'm saying that again. I'm sorry. It's dangerous for a provocateur? It, with, with, armed, with armed people in the crowd, it's dangerous for a provocateur. Well, this is the spirit of 1776 rising again, Chris, and we commend your courage. Uh, and I think it's an important message to the establishment and to the minions and to the communist parasite rabble. We're done playing games. And they wanted to have Obama's youth brigades with M16s training the youth for this to be used against us. And I, I think it fundamentally freaks them out to see you guys out there with this much courage. But I think real men and women resonate with the courage and knew what it took for you to come out there and do it. Plus, the police are like... There's already concealed weapons all over the place out there. They know how stupid it is. Out there. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I just said there could have been thousands of guns concealed out there. We have no idea. 